Um, hello, welcome everybody. Uh, today we are going to talk about um, temporality, um, our all-time favorite. Um, for those in the room that don't know what it is, lucky you. Um, everybody else, we are going to do it together. Um, let me run a little survey at the beginning. Um, who in here is using OpenTelemetry to send metrics somewhere? Okay, nice. Um, who in here is sending that to a uh, Prometheus compatible backend that uses that data format? All right. Um, who in here has dealt with temporality decisions before? All right, nice. Okay. Um, for those who have no idea what I'm actually talking about, um, I brought this little example graph, which is just some random time series that you might have. Um, one way to send this time series over the internet would be to send the absolute values. Like, those, like it's a counter, it's going up and down, um, and you just essentially accumulate from some random starting point in time. Um, an alternative way to transmit the same information would be to transmit the changes. So instead of doing the absolute over time, you just say plus two, plus zero, plus three, minus seven. Um, both ways are technically mathematically equivalent. However, they do have certain differences on the edge cases when actually using them. Which opens up the question, which actually, actually to use, delta or cumulative? Um, for the ones not that familiar with the mathematical symbols, I'm using the sum as cumulative and the delta for delta. Anyways. Um, the one that is most obvious is state, um, in the sense of what an SDK that's emitting metrics in that way needs to memorize. For delta, this is not a lot you essentially record all the measurements since the last time you've sent something to your backend. Once that, like, if you're doing it on an interval or ad hoc, doesn't really matter here. Um, if you, well, like, the second you flush, you can pretty much forget what you had before and start collecting again. Um, this allows for pretty um, little memory usage um, and is especially suitable for short-lived jobs. Think, I don't know, some serverless function that really can't keep something longer than the few milliseconds it's actually running. Um, alternatively, for cumulative, um, you essentially have to remember everything you were tracking over the whole application's lifespan. So once a process starts in, and you have an active series, you record the cumulated value for that, and the next time you want to emit something, you need to memorize what it was before to do that very accumulation, which does in fact lead to somewhat increased memory use, which you would need to assess if it's suitable for your own application. Um, another more interesting one in particular here is sample loss. So the second one measurement does not actually make it over the network for various reasons, like things do go wrong all the time. Um, which is not really that much of a problem if you're using the cumulative temporality because um, yes, you do lose resolution because th that point is now gone. Like you can see here, it should have been down there, it isn't. However, the next point will bump the series back up to its correct value. So while not as precise, it's still formally correct in what is stored in the database ultimately. The story for Delta looks a little different here. Because we did, in fact, lose that minus six in that specific scenario, um, we are only adding up the, po like the changes we get later. So we are effectively, in that case, now overcounting for the rest of the lifespan, um, which may or may not be a problem for your application. So say if you would rate that, um, like if it's a rate, rate aggregation on that series anyways, this would have little effect. Um, like yes, it would be somewhat off, but that can't be fixed. Um, if you are trying to rely on the absolute value to enforce a limit, for example, this would in fact be quite an issue. Um, another one is the P 
periodicity. So many, many monitoring systems out there report their values like on a specific interval. The OpenTelemetry SDK does as well when you're using the periodic reader, which I guess most of you do. Um, for cumulative data points, you will get like that very strict distribution as you can see here. So it will be on the timestamps it's configured to do. However, for Delta, if nothing happens, like if there's no application activity within a certain time period, it will not send the zero because it doesn't even know about that series existing anymore because it dropped that information from memory, which is kind of the whole point. So if you're having very low activity series and want to use a monitoring system, such, for example, Prometheus, that re relies on having a certain activity on the time series, then you will run into issues and need to find a solution for that. Um, the big one, converting. It is possible, so the um, Open Telemetry Collector has two processors, the cumulative to delta and delta to cumulative. Um, the latter one is fairly new and in development, and disclaimer, I'm developing it together with others. Um, it's, both of those are fairly usable, but do come with caveats, of which the biggest is they are stateful, which means um, because essentially to properly do the maths to change the temporality, um, every single measurement of a series or, or stream in total terms um, needs to be sent to the exact same collector. So to ensure that you can't just horizontally scale them out um, and just distribute using, using a load balancer, but you need to configure some sort of sticky routing there. Um, which you could do using the load balancing processor, but then you essentially need to spin up like one layer of collectors to do the load balancing and another layer to do the actual conversion, which does add quite a few components into your monitoring pipeline that you might have not even needed before if you were attempting to convert temporalities. So this is something to be aware of if that complexity is even acceptable. Um, for the delta to cumulative case, it's also worth mentioning that out of order samples are a bit of an issue because if you're talking in a pure delta world, then it kind of doesn't really matter if a sample comes late in. Like, it's just, you can, most databases support adding that um, in later and fixing it up afterwards. However, when accumulating and you send out an 18 for a certain timestamp, and then you get some minus three, which is earlier, you can't like backdate that because you emitted a sample which is stored somewhere, so it breaks in that case. So if your data is arriving heavily out of order, some resorting of some sort might need to happen. And as mentioned before, it does add operational complexity, so this is something to definitely be aware of. So. Those are now more advice slash opinions, and I'm happy to discuss them later. Um, I would say avoid converting if you can. Um, when your backend expects delta, then try to turn your whole telemetry pipeline into delta. If your backend expects cumulative, try to turn your whole pipeline uh, into cumulative samples. If you absolutely have to, the tools are available, but they come at a certain cost. And another take, oh, yeah, sure. So for the open telemetry SDKs, um, there's an environment variable um, that you can just set to delta or to cumulative and it will directly emit when using OTLP in that way. Um, another one, I will suggest everybody tends to use cumulative unless, as mentioned before, either their backend suggests something else, um, or they have a very, very good reason to do otherwise, like they need the reduced memory consumption or um, they need to use short-lived jobs. Because of that very thing, that cumulative is a lot more resistant to intermittent um, network dropouts and will most likely give you a more, more stable experience in that sense. Um, one more thing. Um, 
this is probably of interest of some people here. Um, at Grafana Labs, we um, are adding initial support to the data dog receiver on the open telemetry collector so that you can send, that you can use that to essentially use all of the OTL ecosystem of that type of data too, in which case you will get delta metrics. So if you want to convert them, this is one of the cases where this absolutely becomes required. Um, this is available in our own distribution of the collector as we speak and will be upstreamed in the coming weeks. Another more thing I was asked to give a shout out to Grafana Happy Hour Seattle. If you're interested in that, feel free to scan this QR code. And that's it for me.